morning. I had a request this morning for number 593 as a favorite hymn. Number 593. That's Here I Am, Lord. What a perfect way to start worship with Here I Am, Lord. 593. It'll be up on your screen, too. 593. Let's do the whole thing. so much.
Good morning. morning. Welcome into God's house. It's great to have the choir back, isn't it? You'll find out how great it is when you hear our anthem today. It's beautiful. Are there announcements, joys, or concerns that you'd like to lift up this morning? Yes, Linda. Where's our mics? Could you guys pass that down to Linda, please? Most of you know that Murray and Mary Marston's daughter, um, Ashley, is getting married to Jeremy. And so we usually have a shower for our members of our church, and we're going to do it on Cookie Sunday. Wow. And that's the 27th of September. So you won't have to bring cookies, whoever is furnishing them, because we have a beautiful cake being made by Jean Silker. Thank you. Are there others? I want to say thank you for the prayers. Uh, as many of you know, my scan showed no new cancer, and that's what we were all praying for. And thank you. Thank you, Judy. You are definitely... You are definitely beloved by your church family. After a, After a short hiatus, we are back to Kids of the Kingdom and Kids with a Mission this week. So um, if any of you say, oh, I forgot to volunteer, I would sure love to help. We would love to have you help. We have most of our slots filled, but... <laughs> precariously so um, there are still opportunities awaiting and we've had wonderful volunteers to help with uh, bulletin boards and supplies and just one thing after another so we thank you for that and most of all please continue to pray pray for our kids these are kids in the community who many of them do not go to Sunday school or church anywhere. So it's either Bible school or Kids of the Kingdom is the only time they hear the Word of God. And if that isn't an opportunity, wow, it's available. Yeah. It's there. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your donations financially to help this program continue and whatever you can do to help out. Thank Our other leaders of Kids of the Kingdom. That reminds me, Sunday, junior senior high youth group start up again this Sunday. Tomorrow. Oh, excuse me, this afternoon. <laughs> Today's Sunday, isn't it? <laughs> this evening from 6 to 7. Anita. Um, in Acts 19.11, uh, it talks about, it says, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. And um, what I would like to offer, if you would like to say a prayer for Tate Reed, this is going to be over on, the, on the, one of the pews on the wall. And if you'll just say a prayer and tie a knot in the quilt, we're going to mail it to Tate uh, tomorrow. Oh, wonderful. And then I also have uh, work sh the work day, church cleanup work day, fall work day, whatever you want to call it, uh, is this coming Saturday from 8 to 12. And I'm going to go ahead and pass around the clipboard again if you didn't get a chance last week to sign up for to help with that or if you forgot what you signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to make sure it gets up into the choir too, so I'll start it back on the far wall back there. Thank you, Anita. Yes, Alan. I have a joy. I spent yesterday down at the state fair with my wife and daughter and granddaughter, which is always a thrill, and uh, went through the Oz building. Be sure you do that because it's arts and craft. We got the east end of that. Saw the grand champion of the state fair it was our very own Kurt Robson with a beautiful stone carving. So if you wow. make the state fair, go to the Oz building and be sure to check that out. And be sure to let him know how beautiful it was. Thank you. We hope you'll give our congratulations to Kurt. Are there other joys or concerns or announcements? If not, then let's take a few moments, just a few moments, to greet one another in the name of Christ.
The Lord be with you. We are called to follow Jesus. No, it will demand our dedication and our energy. Come, all of you, come and learn of the Lord Jesus. Remain standing for the opening prayer, and then we will sing, Cry of My Heart. In unison, Lord, we have come this day to hear your words of healing love and hope. Enter our hearts and our spirits, and teach us to follow you. Give us courage and strength to be your faithful disciples. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Do we have somebody from the missions team to tell us about our special offering? Yes, yeah, Stacy. Got any kids? Come up here, hand out baskets. Anybody? The moment for missions today is the EES Special Needs Fund, and looks like Jan printed off a very nice synopsis of in the back. I um, it's used to help um, in case of kids needing some extra clothing or jeans, sometimes a hat or gloves if they don't have that. And I know some other groups have donated to that in the past and it's greatly appreciated. I think the school nurse a lot of times is the one who gets to hand that stuff out. But um, I just heard that they really appreciate it and it's definitely needed and it's a good ministry to help out with. So thank you. Uh, brought the baskets back up, had a chance to pass them all around. Come up, stay up, and uh, join Lou Adams for our children's moment. Come on back up. I 
I'd sit down there, but I don't think I'd get up. I want to borrow your chair. Oh, I'll stand over here in the corner. No, you can sit over there. <laughs> well, I feel bad sending the pastor to the corner. <laughs> how about that? Boy, how many of you have parents? Uh, every one of you. Good. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. Parents. What do you think makes a good parent? What? Oh, they give you hugs. Okay. What other things do good parents do? What? They carry things what? Show respect. Absolutely. Then you can do that back. What other things? Yes. Yeah, there's lots of things when it talks about taking care of someone, isn't there? Faith, what do your mom and dad do that's special for you? Every day, what do they do? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll take you to school and help you out. What do you say? They take care of you. Yes, and there's a special... That is why. Because they love you. Now, today, we're going to read in the... Ephesians, it says in the Bible, listen real carefully, this applies to you. Children, obey your parents. That's the right thing to do. And then it goes on to say, because God placed them in authority over you. Honor your father and your mother. It's the first of God's commandments that ends with a promise. And this is the promise that if you honor your father and mother, and that's your word respect you talked about, then your life will be filled with blessings. Now I'm going to talk to you today about a very special family. And you know, I've had birds here before. But today I'm bringing a special one. See if you know who this one is. Do you know what kind of bird this is? What do you think? Nope. Not a red bird. Yes, you're right. And you knew that too. Good. Well, now this is a very special robin. And I picked this one out because all birds take care of their children. But this one does an especially good job. Now, do you think that they are here all the time in Ellsworth? No. You know, it's getting a little cooler out. And so they fly clear to Canada. They go far, far away, up into Canada. Then in the springtime, they come back. And the first one to come back is Daddy. Daddy Robin comes first. Now, Daddy Robin, if you have Robins at your place, that Daddy Robin that was there last year is going to come back again next spring. He's going to come to the same place. They know where our yard is on Elizabeth Street, and they're going to come over there, and he's going to start looking for a nest place and he's going to start singing real loud. So in the spring when you hear the robin singing, it's daddy robin singing and you know what he's telling everybody? This is my space for my children. That's what he's singing and he's telling all those other birds stay away. Stay away. Now after daddy's robin's been there and he's been singing, mama comes. Yeah. Oh. He does. And you know what Mama's going to do? She's going to get ready for the babies that are going to come. And I had to wrap up the nest because it gets kind of messy, but I'm going to let you see it. This was a perfect nest when I picked it up. And it's got three layers in it. And Mama's going to make something shaped like a bowl. Isn't that shaped like a bowl? Yeah, you wouldn't want to put your soup in there, but yeah shaped like a bowl. And the first thing she does is she gets all kinds of sticks and twigs, heavy stuff. You see that on the outside? Now, what do you next see? What's that next layer? What do you think that is? Yeah. Ugh, mud. And she takes mud. Why? Because she can glue all those sticks together with that mud. And if she can't find it and it hadn't rained in Ellsworth, she will find somebody's bird bath and she'll put dirt in her mouth, in her beak, and she'll run to that bird bath, get it, and mix that dirt up with water and make mud. 
Now she makes a layer of mud, and then what's on the inside? What's inside there? What is that? Grass, real soft grass. You want to feel that? I'll let you feel inside of there. See how nice and soft that is? That isn't sticks and doesn't hurt you. It's soft. Yeah. How about that? Here, you can put your hand in there too. Yeah. And she gets the nest ready. Daddy's picked out a place to put it and mama fixes the nest. Now, you know what else they do after they have those little, they lay, mama lays eggs in that nest. And that nest is soft so those eggs don't break. You know, you ever broke an egg? Yeah, if you dropped that carton of eggs on the floor, you'd have a mess, wouldn't you? Well, she doesn't want her eggs to break. She puts them there. And then she's going to have to feed them. Now, these little robins are real interesting. Have you ever sit out in your yard and just watched them? You know, Keith and I are getting older, and we do most anything for entertainment. <laughs> and we'll sit out in the yard and watch the robins feed their babies. And these little robins, they just run across the yard, and then they'll stop and listen. And they'll be sitting there just real quiet, and you'll see their little heads just turn back and forth, and all of a sudden they go, Bloom! and you know what they have in their mouth? A worm. They can either, I don't know, if I don't know if they have ears to hear or if they just feel those little worms under the ground. But they can find worms that no other bird could. Now, if you can't find a worm, you're going to find some other kind of bug. They'll eat other bugs. They'll eat those little snails. They'll eat crickets. They'll eat spiders. Yeah, and that's what they feed their babies. They go to the nest and they feed the babies. And with robins, daddy and mama both feed babies. They both are out there digging for worms. So I want you to look at your special robin next spring, maybe robin two, three, four of them, I don't know. And you watch them running across the yard and see them get those little worms. Now they're making a home, they're feeding their children. And you know what? They only feed their kids about 12 days. 12 days or 14 days, two weeks. And then what do you think happens? What do you think happens? Yeah, they jump out of the nest. One time we had a robin build a nest right out our front door. Had a big wreath out there and they made their nest in our wreath and we could look right out the window into the nest and wait, count the days of the eggs being in the nest, watch the little birdies break those eggs open. And one night we were sitting there watching the news on TV and there was this horrible loud noise. And mother decided in the dark of night for some reason to get the babies out of the nest. Well then the next day we saw mama and the babies out in the yard. And you know what those mom and daddies do? They take the children and they run around the yard and they listen carefully and they show by example what the children are do to get worms out of the ground. Now, then the kids grow up and they become parents and they build nests. Yeah, isn't that what mom and daddies do? Yeah, they're getting you ready to leave the nest someday. Yeah, when you go somewhere else. What wonderful creatures God has given us, these little birds that are so smart about being parents. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for parents, for all the love and the care and the food, the clothing, everything they do for us. And God, we thank you for being our Father, caring for us, each and every one of us here on this earth. Bless these children. And God even bless all the little birds that are out there flying about, setting up homes for their own children. In your name we pray. Amen. And I do have candy. It's in here. You'd be hard-pressed to find it in that basket this morning, wouldn't you? I heard about that basket. It's a good thing. Oh, all right. Let me have a little Sure. Now it's time.
time for the choir.
I'll just take a few moments to share with each other the ways in which we've experienced God's blessing this week. Pardon? Oh, excuse, I thought I'd missed something. <laughs> what did I miss now? Nancy, go ahead. Shall I use this? Yes, use that one right there. Step on I, it. I just wanted to mention that uh, I was able to go to the Beth Moore presentation yesterday, which was live in Wichita. And it was an awesome experience, so much that we had to absorb. Uh, later, I'll have to think about it and tell you what was, was the highlight. The music actually was mostly praise music which I'm not real crazy about, but I got to where I liked some of it. But the thing that really spoke to me is at the end of the service, there's 8,500 women, 8,500 women there. Oh, wow. And we sang Victory in Jesus. And if that wasn't wow. awesome to have everybody singing and be a part of that. And we, had, we learned a lot and it was just, everything was just from God, you know, just speaking to each one of us. Mm. And I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. What a blessing that must have been. Are there other folks who have experienced God's blessing in some way? Yes, Janice. Well, Pastor, uh, we feel that at this time, you have been such a blessing to our congregation that we would like to show our appreciation a little bit oh, with thank a you, gift Janice. to help you on your way home for your mom's memorial. Thank you so much, Janice. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, I'll turn that around and tell you what a blessing you folks have been in my life in so many ways. Thank you. Anybody else? That song we sang. Yes, Dora. Earlier. It's, it's on. Go ahead. Well, you may have turned the switch off. I'm not sure. Uh, that, there we are. That open our eyes that we may see. Um, this morning when I woke up, I always look out my windows to, oh, just to see what's going on. And this morning I looked out and there was this huge, beautiful white cloud. And then there was one smaller and beside it and the sun was shining on it. It just looked like I was in the mountains. It was just gorgeous. And I just thank the Lord for all these vision things that we can see. Thank you, Dora. Are there others? How have you experienced God's blessing? James. My mom's here from Otis, Kansas, and yesterday was her birthday. She's 73 years old. <laughs> no mysteries there. Thank you, James. It's a blessing to have parents with you, isn't it? Others. Well, what are you thankful for? Let's just do that. Holler it out. What are you thankful for? The choir. the choir. Amen. The police. Is that right? That's good. Friends and family over here. Mosaic. Isn't that just a blessing to have mosaic? The hospital. Transients. Excuse me, grandkids. <laughs> that one puzzled me a moment. Great grandkids. Our children. We have so many things to be thankful for, so many ways that God has blessed us, even if you weren't comfortable. Uh, speaking up and saying, how have you experienced God's blessing? Oh. Just, just hold on a second, Deb. Last Monday, we had a great opportunity to go share at a party at the Miller's house, which was so much fun, and oh. the kids were just having a ball, and so blessings that were bound there, you know, it was just really a good, great time. Yeah. Yeah. I think one group of people we can be thankful for is our Sunday school teachers, from adult classes to our children's classes. Anybody else? Let's join together in our next hymn, Where Charity and Love Prevail. The words may be new, but you'll probably recognize the tune.
what a wonderful thing it is that we have a God who's made us family. Amen? The way, one of the most important ways that we can show our gratitude for the family of God is to receive an offering which we can send out into the world through our United Methodist Connection to feed God's children other places. Let's receive our morning offering. Would the ushers come forward? Let's pray. Gracious God, out of your bounty, you've given us all that we need. Give us generous hearts that we may give back a small portion that your will be done. In your name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. A story of Jesus. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference for no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him. And went away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
This is an old, old song. Those of you who uh, enjoyed the Tin Pan Alley uh, era of great uh, music, you may remember. See if I can sing it right. All of me, why not take all of me? Can't you see I'm no good without you? You took the part that once was my heart, so why not take all of me? That's probably not right, but the tune, uh, hopefully the tune was close. But you got the idea. One day, some of Jesus, or some of the religious leaders of Jesus' day came to him with a sly question. They asked him whether it was lawful, right thing in God's eyes to pay taxes to the Roman government. It was one of those questions where regardless of how he answered, it would be the wrong answer. He knew that these leaders were trying to, to do, to trap him into saying or doing something that would get him arrested, that it would get him out of the way. And so he asked them to tell him what was imprinted on the Roman co currency. They showed him a coin that said something to the effect, in Caesar we trust, and it had his Caesar's picture on there. Roman coins that had that inscription because it was the emperor who was thought to be divine, a god in fact. Caesar demanded the total loyalty and reverence of the people. He wanted his claim to be first and foremost claim on the lives of all the inhabitants of the Roman world. He wanted to be treated like God. And so Jesus said, Give to the emperor the things that belong to the emperor, and give to God the things that belong to God. Our nation's currency says, In God we trust. I, I don't remember, I don't... Uh, know whether this has changed or not. Our nation's Pledge of Allegiance uses the phrase, one nation under God. Is that still true? Yes. Okay. Now this would seem to suggest that God is our nation's ultimate concern, if we just take it at face value, and that God is the one who has the highest claim on us. Such a high claim that we put it on our money. To remind us. And yet when we consider some of the things that we give our loyalty and our time and ourselves to both personally and as a nation, we may have cause to wonder whose claim is first and foremost over our lives. Of all the things that are in creation what is there that has the right to stake a claim on you and me? Our money and our possessions are a great concern to us, sometimes more than others. Family, career, our personal interests and activities. But do these concerns really have the right to claim us? Really? There's no competition. Because God's claim on us comes before anything else. We are God's prized possession and beloved children. The Christian author Tony Campolo t tells a story of a man who had a five-year-old daughter. One night during a thunderstorm, lightning flashing and thunder roaring, this father went to check on his daughter. He was afraid she might be afraid. Well, he found his little girl standing on the windowsill, leaning spread-eagled against the glass, and he asked her, Honey, what are you doing? And she said, I think God's trying to take my picture. <laughs> How many of you keep pictures of your children and your grandchildren and your great-grands in your wallet or in your purse? 
How many? Not as many as I expected. <laughs> maybe, that's such, maybe that's not such a big thing anymore. Do you take those pictures out and show them to folks whenever you can, and especially when asked? It's a comforting thought, then, to imagine that God has a picture of you and me, each of us, tucked away in the divine wallet to remind God that we are totally and irrevocably God's own and best possession. Maybe we should have pictures of God in our wallets. What would you put in there? I don't know. God's claim on us is total. After all, God made the world and God made us. Our Creator has the right to say, You are mine first. When we think about it that way, all other demands on us seem to pale in comparison. All the other things that are competing for our attention, our time, and our energy take a back seat to God's claim on us. Nothing else is worthy of us. Nobody else has the right to claim our total being. And because we are God's, God has the right to expect some things from us. We are accountable to God for all that we say, all we think, and all that we do. In all areas of our life, God has the right and the authority to tell us how to live. Did you ever think of it that way? And God's instructions to us are really quite simple. We are to love each other and to treat each other with respect that is due to creatures of God's making, creatures whom God loves. We're to give food to those who are hungry and find a place for those who are homeless. We think of what's happening in Europe. One of the reasons why some of those uh, European countries are giving shelter is because they believe it's their Christian duty. We are to speak up for those who have no voice and to protect those who cannot defend themselves. We are not to wage war. Rather, we are to think and say and do the things that make for peace. We are to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. We are to remember that all we have, all our possessions, all our money, all our time, and all our energy, all belongs to God. We're not to simply consume and use all that we can get our hands on. Rather, we are to be stewards. We are to use only what we really need and give the rest back to God. When we look at our hearts, whose inscription is written there? Whose image do we bear on our souls? It was God who created us. It was God who set that inscription on us that we are made in our Creator's image. And it is God who brings us back when we wander away. God doesn't want just a part of us, the part that we can spare when we're through buying, through consuming, through spending, through doing what we want to do. God wants all of us. What else can we do but to do, as Jesus said, to give to God all that is God's, our money, our possessions, our hearts, our souls, our bodies. After all, 
we belong to God. of your word and your will. Speak these words through these lips, your own words of life. Let them heal the broken hearted. Lord, make me a servant I'll wait on you hand and foot draw me close let me know you let me touch your heart let me be your prized possession I am yours I am yours I've been bought with a life so precious I am you I'm brand new in you my Jesus I am yours yes I am Feel your spirit calling me. I'll follow. Yes, I'll follow because I am yours. Would you pray with me? God, of, out of all creation, you have made us a little bit lower than the angels. And now we ask that you remind us that we are yours and you are ours. Let us live as your prized creation and place all our trust in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Now let's join together in our closing hymn. I will call upon the Lord. Would you stand?
join together in the unison benediction. Go in peace and know that God walks with you on this journey. Bring the good news of Christ's healing from all to all.